Fellow Southern Cameroonians, Ambazonians, good evening. Accept revolutionary greetings from the President Seseko Ayuk Tabe and the collective leadership in detention. As we speak, our people are confronted by multiple challenges. The most significant being a threat to our own very existence. A challenge not many people have been forced to confront in the course of their history. We are trying to deal with the fallout of a war of extermination imposed on our people by the French neo-colonial regime in next door Cameroon in its efforts to enforce the occupation. Our brave restoration forces, whom less than three years ago were teachers, students, Farmers, cab drivers, buy and sell them, and simple citizens are fearlessly standing up to the cowardly French government's death squad that burned villages and shoot babies in their sleep. The Cameroon Prime Minister now ruins our streets begging for federalism, which their president less than three years declared could never be a topic for discussion. Our revolution is rooted in our inalienable rights to self-determination, a right that can never be given nor taken away by any government or legal power. As a boy, my mom would often send me to deliver my grandfather's roasted corn, boiled peanuts, or roasted pears at his wood carving shop in Bamenda. A policeman in the former British Southern Cameroons. As he snacked on the corn, my grandfather would call me by my clan name, Kokor, and in a pensive tone as he contemplates the main problems facing our communities and urge me to please fight for the freedom of our people from the lie we are living when you grow up. As young as I was, I didn't get the full picture. He would tell me stories of what it was like to have lived and worked in the democratic southern Cameroons before the occupation. It all became clear to me when he was arrested as the chairman of the Cameroon Anglophone Movement, CAM, along with his comrades, and mercilessly beaten at the Gendarmerie Légion in upstation Bamenda. Their crime being their willingness to talk about their deep conviction in the need for a free and independent Amazonia they could call home. On my visit following their release, his legs were suspended on a stool with scary blood clots and blisters on every patch of skin on both legs. I wept in pain, but he repeated himself again in a semi-whisper, looking me straight in the eyes, saying, Don't forget 
what I've told you. And even if I die, fight to liberate our people from this bondage. Every day, when I see the lifeless bodies of Southern Cameroonians killed or wasted by the brutal forces of La Republique du Cameroon, the picture of my granddad's legs appear before me. When I hear our refugees are hungry and helpless, that picture appears before me. When I hear our IDPs, especially women, lack parts for their personal hygiene, that image appears before me. When I hear our boys who have committed themselves to defend homeland have no food or the right tools to use defend us all, granddad's words stare me in the face. When I hear we cannot afford the legal fees for our leaders in jail or cannot afford mattresses for most La Republic du Cameroon captives of their senseless war and detainees in their filthy jails, that image haunts me. When I see our brothers distracted and fighting each other instead of the occupier, that image haunts me. When I see our people on all streets, in all houses, in all communities, villages, and towns, willing to continue to sacrifice everything they have, including their lives, bent never to give up until we get into a free Amazonia, that image haunts me. Many of us have similar stories, like that of my granddad, of Ambalanas, that came before us, who on passing unto the eternal glory bequeathed to us the call to free our motherland. That call seemed answered by 2016 launch of the revolution for the independence of Amazonia. And tonight, I want to talk to you about the battle we are waging to resuscitate our revolution from a downward spiral triggered by the January 5th, 2018 kidnap and forcible return to the Cameroon regime of the leadership of our burgeoning movement for the independence of Southern Cameroon's Amazonia. I'm talking here of our leaders, Comrade President Siseko Ayuktabe Julius, Comrade Deacon Mr. Tassan Wilfrent, Comrade Professor Augustine Awasum, Comrade Dr. Colinus Kwanga, Comrade Dr. Henry Kimeng, Comrade Dr. Fidelis Ndeche, Comrade Dr. Egbe Ogok, Comrade Barista Sufshufai Berlinu, Comrade Barista Eyambe Elias, and Comrade Dr. Mfo Ngalamfo. This, in addition to the earlier detentions of other Amazonian leaders, like comrades Mancho Bibixi, Patrick Ndango, Penn Terence, Zenjo Jemen, Nsi Conrad, Ndasi Afred, Tebit, just to mention a few. Revolutionaries, as a must, should sacrifice for their people. We hail our leaders in the detention for the Amazonian Freedom Protocol that proclaims total independence or resistance forever. This is an epitome of the words of revolutionary leader Nelson Mandela during the Rivonia trial address of 20th of April 1964 in defending his, revolution, his revolutionary actions and goals when he said, I have cherished the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all persons live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve. But if need be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. Total independence or resistance forever is your mantle, our vision, and we can't wait to meet in Boyer in a free southern Cameroon's Amazonia. 
The Cameroon Military and Government Death Squad, the Rapid Intervention Battalion, B, has since burned down more than 206 Amazonian villages, along with the old and sick in their beds in some cases. They take their time to loot businesses and homes, in some cases prior to burning down the village, and make sure to kill our pigs and dogs while they are at it. More than 2,000 of our fellow Amazonian citizens have been killed, either by summarily execution or randomly shot by Cameroon soldiers without cause. Beyond the malicious premeditated massacres, terror-inducing tactics like deliberately dumping corpses to, the, to decompose in the village square have been deployed. We currently have more than 2,500 political prisoners being illegally held by the Cameroon regime. 20 in the principal prison in Yaoundé, 220 in the Kondengi High Security Prisons or Central Prison in Yaoundé, and 50 others in secret detention centers around Yaoundé. 600 in Boya, 116 in Douala, 4 in Edea, close to 200 in the Bamenda Central Prison, with the rest scattered in detention centers across Cameroon from Balmayo, Bafusam, Bunda, Nchang, Betwa, Fumban, and of recent, Gaundere. More than half a million of our people have been forced to abandon everything they worked for their, li for their entire lives to become refugees in Nigeria and other neighboring countries like Ghana, and millions are internally displaced in Amazonia and across the border in Cameroon. More than 100 of our villages have been deserted and being taken over by grass, as tens of thousands of villagers flee into the forests to sort safety from the Cameroon military and are now living in the forest exposed to the elements and wild animals. The UN Security Council was warned in December 2018 that this conflict has become, I quote, one of the fastest growing displacement crises in Africa. In April of 2019, the UN reported that the conflict was affecting at least 4 million people. This is close to the entire population of Ireland or New Zealand and more than the population of some 103 countries. The sadness and anger our people feel is not just about the material and human losses, but it's about a wrenching anxiety that the communities their ancestors built for thousands of years might be lost for good. But I refuse to let this happen. Our resolve has been tested. Our resilience has been proven. On my nomination as Vice President on May 2, 2019, and a reinstatement of this interim government, my team and I immediately set about a process for a deep multi-stakeholder appraisal of the revolution along with the deployment of multiple assessment teams to establish the exact needs of our revolution and how to meet these needs. These assessment teams stretch from the needs of our sisters and brothers defending our communities to the exact location of every Amazonian in need of assistance. From young people in injured defending our communities in desperate need of vital care, to identifying the whereabouts of every Amazonian being held by the Cameroon regime. While these assessment teams continue their work on the ground thus far, the need has been revealed to be pretty substantial. 
But make no mistake, we will fight the setback that has followed the kidnapping of our leaders with everything we've got for as long as it takes. We will make the Cameroon regime pay for the damage it has caused. And we will do what is necessary to get our revolution recover its full vigor. Our resolve has been tested and our resilience to be free proven. Thank you, my dear people, for all your sacrifices. Boyer is our prize and that we will together deliver to ourselves. Our women are increasingly taking the central stage. Eleanor Roosevelt says, A woman is like a tea bag. You never, knew how, you never know how strong she is until she gets in hot water. We salute the women of Amazonia for your selflessness and sacrifices for the struggle to the extent of digging graves to bury young children slain by La Republique du Cameroon. In the same vein, we invite all Amber women in the homeland and diaspora to stand up and join your sisters, mothers and grandmothers. Take your place in history and provide the much desired leadership only a woman can provide to ensure the defense of the restoration of our independence, our independence quest, just as the Federation of South African Women did in the famous march to the Union Building on the 9th of August 1956 that took the South African Liberation Movement to the next level. Fellow Ambazonians, the new dawn is here. The Federal Republic of Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia IG care. We mobilize, fundraise, educate, collaborate, and deliver. Tonight, I would like to lay out for you what our battle plan is going forward. We are doing what we are doing to overcome the challenges resulting from the January 5th, 2018 kidnapping of our leaders, what we are doing to prevent a repeat of the breakdown in the functioning of our revolution, as revealed by endless infighting following the kidnapping of leaders, and what we are doing to ensure our refugees, IDPs, and prisoners get a sustainable sustainable stream of support no matter what happens to the leadership of the movement at any given time. Our revolution needs participatory democratic structures that do not rely on the character of individuals in leadership for accountability to reign in the process of decision making. To establish such, we look at the movement within the frame of a unified self-defense, a unified political engagement of our community and coordinated international outreach. On unified self-defense, we have been singularly focused on uniting our sisters and brothers defending our communities within a county by county and local government by local government platform to facilitate collaboration, quick territory-wide decision-making, resources sharing, and more importantly, participatory decision-making on self-defense related issues across Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia. With the conclusion of Memorandum of Understanding and internal decision-making processes, to meet its commitment to accountability to the community, our folks working on this united platform will provide the community with as much information as can be provided without jeopardizing the security and safety of the individuals involved, our communities, 
or the undermining project itself. There is an urgent need for a unified and coordinated federal and county self-defense force powered by independent self-defense forces or those on the local government areas structures. This we will achieve for it is a new dawn. On unified internal political process will ensure grassroots participation in decision-making for transparency, accountability, and democracy. I categorically reject the prehistorical idea that revolutions are supposed to be dictatorships. The primary purpose of our revolution is independence from occupation by the French neo-colonial regime in Cameroon, and with its freedom, equality, and justice. We must start practicing these virtues now. There will never be a calm enough time to practice them. Each department in the cabinet will build independent, autonomous, public organizational collaboration platforms with transparent and open membership to facilitate grassroots engagement with their work some of these platforms might be trade union-like institutions, like with names like Ambazonia Association of Journalists or Ambazonia Association of Teachers, with Comrade Penn, Comrade Deacon Tassang Wilfred, Comrade Professor Augustina Wasum, Comrade Dr. Cornelius Kwanga, Comrade Dr. Henry Kimeng, Comrade Dr. Fidelis Ndeche, and Comrade Dr. Egbe Ogok as board members for life. Working with the rest of our team in the days ahead and weeks ahead, our various departments will present to our community blueprints with timelines, measurable achievements, and public reporting schedules. This will allow our community to easily make inputs into their work, evaluate their progress or lack thereof so we can make timely necessary adjustments to ensure our revolution is firing on all cylinders. Our health and social services team have been trying to build such a platform to facilitate collaboration amongst organizations and individuals involved in humanitarian activities within our community for a while now. They will be getting support from organizational change professionals in our team to complete that work. Another example for an independent, autonomous public organization in our community, in the communications and IT domain this time, is SCBC TV. At this point, I would like to make a separate comment on SCBC TV, seeing some of the events that unfolded with it, related primarily to this independent, autonomous, public organizational character that we are talking about, and look to our various departments using them as a tool for public engagement and accountability. SCBC TV, the voice of the Ambazonian Revolution too. During the Fourth Conclave, Resolution Number no. Twenty Five granted autonomy to SCBC to work towards self-sustainability as a broadcaster in the continent under an independent board. Months after that board presented a clear plan of action that will see the interim government reserve fifty-one percent shareholding of the broadcaster as majority shareholder and the remaining 49 of the shares to be open for Ambazonians to invest into the SCBC project as proud Ambazonian investors. This was to be for capitalization and to showcase Ambazonians' first public-private business model, fulfilling both an advocacy 
and revolutionary education and information mandate. There was an attempt to abort that national vision by fellow comrades through both inadvert advertently and sometimes deliberate misinformation and unfortunately outright lies in some instances. Despite the difficulties and challenges that these incidences created for SCBC, it managed to ride the storm. It has remained the people's television station and remains the primary source of information for most of our people in Ground Zero. It must continue to be owned and used by all Amazonians to promote our struggle. If there were any lapses in its operations, in this new dawn, let's fix it. I thank all other independent Amazonian-owned media initiatives and activists for their sacrifices and contributions for our freedom. We got a lot more work ahead of us. This is the time to redouble your efforts. Autonomous political institutions are the character of the 21st century global social justice movement, and we can optimize the benefits our revolution gears from the movement by developing structures that facilitate smooth exchange and collaboration. My team and I understand that financial accountability has been one of the biggest challenges for leadership and movements and organizations in our community and with the lack of accountability has sowed the seed of mistrust that has demotivated most of the financially viable Ambazonians to be reluctant to contribute. To resolve this challenge, my team has worked really hard and in the weeks ahead, our first step towards collaboration will be to share a presentation of the tools and models all movements and organizations in our struggle can come together and mobilize our community and raise the finances needed for prosecuting the struggle and each donor through one platform be able to donate to any organization of their choosing or a group of them with one donation. All organizations who will sign up to collaborate on this initiative will have their own representatives sitting on an independent financial management board that helps organization with their reporting back in a way that will reassure donors that the work is being done with their money and everything is accounted for. This sounds daunting and it's a challenge. We have brought together some great minds to help create as our first real step towards genuine collaboration and respect to independent movements and even groups advocating for our unconditional independence. This initiative is truly groundbreaking. It is the intermarriage of complexity, revolution, accountability, transparency, and technology. It is called One Amazonia. Exact details on how we will roll it out will be presented for you for you, the people to own one Amazonia in the days ahead. To the initiator of this wonderful idea, may the gods of Ambazonia bless your team and you. This is a new dawn. My team and I wish to announce the creation of the Bank of Amazonia as a unique symbol of our revolution. The Ambazonian Jangi House will be organized as an informal financial institution, that is, a, so a shadow bank, to spur sustainable resource mobilization through a central but decentralized collection platform, expenditure management, accountability, and to improve solidarity with all counties, countries, and regions who will provide independently elected board members or governors and elect the chairperson and 
deputy of the board. The Bank of Ambazonia, in time, will, amongst its objectives, provide short-term loans to counties to enhance and strengthen their capabilities to defend and provide humanitarian relief to their communities, as well as provide a safe alternative for the counties and local government areas to bank, save, and move their money. We further announced the Njangi Money. It will be a col collaborative and networking platform for the counties during which all counties will contribute for the benefit of one county each week. In this case, providing a reasonable amount of resources for impactful county support to the homeland. More details on the Ambazonian Jangi House and the Jangi Money programs to be provided in the weeks ahead. Fellow Ambazonians, this is a new dawn. Nelson Mandela, quoting Marianne Williamson, inspired us with these following words. As we let our own light shine, we consciously give other people permission to do same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. I employ all leaders of our revolution to be a spotlight of what we expect of our people within the quest of our liberation struggle. We shall urgently embark on our homeland and diaspora community reconstruction, community social mobilization projects through our local government areas, counties, countries, and region. To this regard, my team and I wish to announce a worldwide protest on Sunday the 22nd and Thursday, Tuesday, October 1st, 2019, in Jaspora and a ghosted homeland on those two days as a manifestation of our collective resolve towards the complete restoration of the independence of Southern Cameroons, Ambazonia, that was declared on the 1st of October, 2017. I call on all physical constituencies in the diaspora to get to work, starting with their immediate community and constituency, lobbying as a bill up to our Independence Day. A detailed plan for the preparation of September 22nd and October 1st will be rolled out in the weeks ahead. This is a new dawn. We have planned to urgently create a database documenting genocidal crimes of the, first, of the French Cameroon terrorist forces within the shortest possible time. To our greatest amazement as cabinet, some truly bona fide Ambazonians challenged themselves to this revolutionary responsibility and created an amazing website that captures the atrocities of the occupier, La République du Cameroon. I implore you all to go visit the website www.ambazoniagenocidelibrary.com www.ambazoniagenocidelibrary.com And on behalf of all our people, we comment and celebrate you and call on all bona fide ambas Ambazonians to emulate your example. We are truly proud of you. Please reach out to me directly. Data and information are ingredients we need to dismantle La Republic du Cameroon in diplomacy, courts, communication, and rev revolutionary public relations. The cabinet of the interim government had created an Ambazonian Department of Statistics whose work was shelved. Your team will champion evidence collection against La Republique du Cameroon again so that not even one atrocity is missing in our archives. Abed Mukong is so proud of your team and so we are.
this is a new dawn. On credible and accountable leadership with integrity, we, the people of Ambazonia, have an opportunity for an inclusive, non-partisan and non-sectarian sectarian leadership in order not to compromise our legitimate legal history. This is against the backdrop of division within Southern Cameroon's leadership, infighting and a negative image of our struggle to our people and the international community due to perceived lack of integrity, accountability, and moral compass. The biggest casualties are our people in the homeland. Einstein describes insanity as doing the same thing over and over again but expecting different results. Our collective selfless leadership action is compelling at this time to save lives and suffering in our homeland. In his book, Attuned Leadership, Dr. Koza comments that leaders are not just born to rule. They are born, then made, and sometimes unmade by their own actions. A leader who is not attuned to his or her followers soon becomes a leader in limbo and invariably then fails. Connectedness, compassion, empathy, integrity, humility, reasonableness, and a determination to be effective are the keys to attune leadership. Attune leadership provides a compass for the direction of ethical leadership. African humanism or Ubuntu evokes both reason and empathy as the basis for ethical leadership. On coordinated international outreach, we want to add our voice to that of 16 major human rights organizations and civil society organizations who signed the 7 February 2019 petition calling on the UN to mandate an international independent fact-finding mission to stop the killings establish the facts on the ground and beginning the process of ending the conflict. Of all aspects of our struggle, international outreach has been the one place we've been barely able to achieve any real victories. Despite the scale of the humanitarian impact of the conflict on our communities, we have not been able to pass a single resolution in the elected parliament or congress of a single country, even as the number of fellow citizens affected by the, con country, by the conflict reached the 4 million mark. It is very important that we get down to the hard work of internal, international outreach. Using empirical knowledge from the works of other independent movements that went ahead of us, this is going to be of great importance in securing critical support and humanitarian assistance for our IDPs, refugees, and political prisoners. The recent history of similar conflicts show that no exiled community has the capacity to single-handedly fund the needs of their refugees, inter internal displaced persons, and political prisoners Rather, independence movements mainly provided seed capital and prototypes of creative initiatives which then get scaled up to meet the required needs by the donor community. Then, there is the issue of mobilizing the global social justice movement to take up our course, of which we are just in the beginning stages of initiating working relations with major players. There is the issue of fighting the lobbyists of the Cameroon regime. Again, here we need a coherent strategy and coordinated messaging. We look to the white paper 
by our outreach, that is of the Department of Foreign Affairs, on deployment of independent autonomous organizing in days and weeks ahead. I urge all activists and groups in our communities to engage these conversations and share their feedback on the state of affairs with our revolution as our various departments start putting out their white papers on how we hope to proceed. Fellow Ambazonians, this is a new dawn. As data comes in from our assessment teams on the field, we'll be offering adjustment to these white papers as necessary. If there are other ideas on how to achieve the goals of accountability and participation in the community, we would like to hear them. We understand that without our community's engagement with the ideas in the white paper from our departments, no matter how good the ideas are, it will be an exercise in futility. That is why the second thing we are focused on is preventing a repeat of the breakdown in the functioning of our revolution as revealed by endless infighting following the kidnapping of our leaders. The sudden absence of our leaders just as our revolution was breaking records in its capacity to mobilize our community at home and abroad creates such pain and frustration that some of us ended up taking it out on our fellow comrades instead of staying focused on the enemy. We ended up losing several comrades under conditions that could have been avoided. A toxic cloud of distrust, backbite, and gossip continues to hang in the air. We must muster the courage to seek peace and unity with our fellow brothers and sisters to go beyond this cloud of suspicion to a place of enough strout to then build self-standing accountability in beaded autonomous institutions with which to do the heavy lifting necessary to bringing our in independence to fruition. I know we can make Boya a reality if we bury all the unproductive tensions in our midst, celebrate each other's strengths, support each other's weaknesses. When we do so, a spare for revolutionary creativity, accountability, respect, and excellence that has been so severely undermined by our infighting will most definitely see the light of day again for what would mark a new dawn. That's why we must make a commitment to grassroots participation that does beyond calls for unity of the leaders of the various groups as a way to bring community together. I make that commitment tonight. Since taking office on May 2nd, 2019, I've assigned teams formally and informally to do a needs assessment on our people on ground one and ground zero and our prisoners of conscience locked up in the various detention centers spotted in La Republique du Cameroon and in southern Cameroon's Amazonia. It is the duty of this administration to get closer to our people and be as participatory as possible. We've reached out to sisters and brothers within and without the administration, as well as organizations in and out of our community for assistance in their areas of expertise and experiences to get problems solved. As well, taken in ideas and advice from anyone who was interested and ready to offer some. Some great men and women have given their all to make our revolution move forward. Because of your efforts, 
a handful of projects that were standing or forgotten have been reactivated. So far, since May 2nd, 2019, I am happy to inform Amazonians that the family of the five-month-old baby Martha shot point-blank ten times in the head by the Cameroon military in her sleep is under our care and safe from La Republic to Cameroon Ham. Medical assistance was also gotten for one of our brothers who was shot in Kumba by the terrorist forces of Paul Bia and left to die. We are following on other cases. 45 mattresses have been supplied to our brothers in the Douala New Bell prison who have been sleeping on the bell floor for past one year. We are going to proceed to other detention centers where we will cater for our prisoners. A humanitarian team has coordinated legal, medical, and meal support to our detainees in Yaoundé. While not enough for our entire political prison population, we look to scale that up in the days and weeks ahead. A pilot project of the same humanitarian assistance has been extended to provide food for prisoners in Douala, Bafusam, Bunda, Nchang, and the international display scattered around the major towns in La Republic to Cameroon. Specific attention will be provided to one of our IDPs in the Cameroon town of Douala diagnosed with cancer. In Nigeria, we have launched some pilot projects that will assist our refugees. 20 pregnant women were provided assistance to welcome our new Amazonian babies unfortunately born as refugees. They at least deserve a dignified birth. Ten other women from our refugee community in Nigeria were part of another pilot project for tailoring skills and another 20 of our refugee women were part of a pilot project for bakery training. Above is the first sample report of the new dawn. The Federal Republic of Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia Interim Government Care. Like I said, our various departments will present white papers and schedules for when they will be providing updates on their achievements. Your Federal Republic of Ambazonia Interim Government proudly informs Ambalanas of our agenda of the new dawn. The Federal Republic of Southern Cameroons Ambazonia IG Care. The renewal or new dawn of our Federal Republic of Ambazonia interim government has started and my team and I are hard at work to put in place radical transformative action that will reduce the carnage on our people and increase our resistance, save lives and, re and relieve the suffering of the people on both in Ambazonia and ground one. The approach is so result-centric. Some of these achievements are from both in-house funding streams as well as taxed, farmed out to stakeholders who would immediately deliver the service or need. The new dawn, the Federal Republic of Amazonia, IG, care. What does it mean to all of us? See in care in the new dawn means creativity. We should all motivate people, our teams, and encourage innovation. A in care in the new dawn is accountability. We will account to our people timeously, accept responsibility for our actions outcomes and aspire to exceed public expectation are in care 
for a new dawn represents respect. We shall exercise due regard for fundamental and people rights to question our actions as well as respect the rights of women, children, and all those that live within Amazonia and respect the laws of our land. And E in the new dawn care program means excellence. We are here to the highest level of professional norms and standards. For this to achieve its full potential, we will need all hands on deck. Which brings me to the question of our need for unity, unity, and unity as a movement. Reconciliation, peace, and unity with our fellow comrades. We must attain or reattain the momentum as it was before the kidnapping of our leaders. To our brave restoration forces who now live on the trees, sleep on empty stomachs, have sacrificed your livelihoods, jobs, and families, and literally given up everything you have, including your lives, to fight for our collective freedom, our words will never be able to express the depth of our appreciation to you. We commit never to abandon you until we get to Boya. To our parents, relatives, and communities who have lost loved ones, their blood will never go in vain. Accept our deepest condolences. To all patriotic Ambazonians who attended both the APNC in Philadelphia and AS, ASSC Berlin conferences, we thank you. My administration and I commit to implement all resolutions from both conferences that advances our cause forward. I want again to publicly acknowledge my brother, Dr. Sako Ikome, for all his efforts to advance this struggle. I publicly stretch out a hand of peace and forgiveness of hurt feelings to him. He answered the call to duty when Amazonian Movement for Independent called in the capacity of acting interim president. We equally thank the collective of the leadership team that worked with Comrade Dr. Sako. There is a lot more we can do together to contribute for the advancement of this revolution. Allow me to start the process of our overall mending fences and coming together by unbanding AGC and her defense organ ADF and SUYL and her defense organ Sokadev with effect immediately. I wish to use this opportunity to publicly stretch out to them a hand of peace and forgiveness. Only together can we deliver motherland, Ambazonia, Southern Cameroons. And again, if there are any other ideas of how to achieve unity in our community, we would like to hear them. On our Ambazonia dream, looking into the future post our restoration quest, the Ambazonian dream is anchored on quality of life and acknowledges the urgent need to redress almost six decades of social and economic stagnation, injustice, rogue governance, dilution of democracy, freedom, liberty, culture, educational and legal systems. A life of quality it's a life of opportunity. The opportunity for steady, productive employment and financial independence. The opportunity to own a home and retire in security. 
the opportunity to enjoy a clean and healthy environment, the right to peace, freedom, and liberty, the opportunity to take our future in our own hands and shape it to our will. Fellow comrades, fellow countrymen and women, there are the ideals for which we are killed for daily. Ideals we must have in our own lifetime. We have already prevailed over La Republic du Cameroon. Our people are committed to a free homeland and a free indigenous home they must have. We need to stand together and take ownership of our resource endowed ancestral land and country. Our rich human capital, the curse of almost six decades that has seen Amazonians thrown into all countries on the planet, one that has become a blessing as we bring back our experiences, expertise, skills, and money to restore our statehood rebuilt our true home and regain our dignity as a people. Martin Luther Jr. said, Let no man pull you so low as to hate him. We must be vigilant and learn our enemy's action and use them to sharpen our reflexes. For the pillar to be firm enough to hold up a house it needs to be buried deep, enforced with rocks, compacted and tested. Your friends are not going to do that for you. It is your enemies who raise you up by default. My people, let those against us not shaken your resolve because it is their hate and anger that empowers our resolve and it will be total independence or resistance forever. To phrase Barack Obama in his 2004 address, this evening, if you feel the same revolutionary energy like I do, the same revolutionary urgency like I do, the same revolutionary passion like I do, the same revolutionary hopefulness like I do, if we do what we must do, I have no doubt that all across our nation, our indigenous home, the people will rise up as they did on September 22nd and October 1st, 2017, and Amazonia will reclaim its promise and out of this long political and legal darkness, a brighter day will come. In July 2017, the then chairman of the governing council, Ayuk Tabe, was prophetic in our request for our restoration when he said, They will firstly ignore you. They did. Secondly, then they laugh at you. And they did. Thirdly, they fight us. And they are. And lastly, he foretold that we will win. We certainly shall win. Our success is assured. We have achieved so much within a short time. One more key ingredient is necessary to take us across the finish line. Unity. Be an ambassador for one Ambazonia project. And let's march into Boyer's soonest. One Ambazonia is your project. Make it happen. Ambazonia must be free soonest. Like I always say, this revolution is less about me, more about you. We are in this together. Ambazonia is one. And first, thank you, and may God bless Ambazonia. 
it shall be total independence or resistance forever. Yeah.